This is a tutorial for the English Language Arts Performance Test. I'm signing in as fifth grade, as with other tutorials, just because it's sort of right in the middle. And this is not really about content, but more about how to navigate the test and what to expect. So I'm going to go into the ELAPT practice test. Keep all these settings the same because they are preset. Click select. Go down to the bottom, scroll down and click yes. Make sure the sound works. If it does, you click I heard the sound. If you don't hear a sound, click I did not hear the sound, raise your hand and let the test administrator know that there's a problem and they'll either fix it up or set you up on a different computer. Begin test now. On the performance tests for English language arts, you will be given some articles to read. And the higher the grade, the longer the articles and maybe the more articles there are. So they all have to do with one certain theme. Okay, they're all about the same type of thing. And after you read all of them, you're going to answer some questions about those articles. And then you're going to write um, a little, you know, not too long, but it will be a full writing process um, piece of work. So either a research report on the articles or a persuasive paper or um, a narrative, it'll tell you what they want. So in this case, you see it says uh, student direction, service animals, opinion, performance tasks. So you know right off the bat that this is going to be, you're going to be giving your opinion about this. The task is a person with a disability visited your class today to discuss how his trained service animal allows him to enjoy more independence and participate more fully in everyday activities. You and your classmates became interested in learning more about service animals. Your teacher took your class to the school library to look up more information about this topic. You have found three articles about service animals. After you have reviewed these sources, you will answer some questions about them. Briefly scan the sources and the three questions that follow. Then go back and read the sources carefully so you will have the information you will need to answer the questions and complete your research. You may click on the global notes button, which is up here. Oh, up here, way at the top, notes. There's your notepad. If you click at the top, you can hold it down and move it out of your way and you'll be able to take notes there. You can take notes on this information you find in the sources as you read. You may also use scratch paper to take notes. Remember, if you're going to use scratch paper and pencil, you need to get up and get it yourself or grab it when you walk in the door. Your teacher cannot remind you to get it during the test. In part two, you will write an opinion paper using you, the information that you have read. Now, this uh, you can use the same process. You should use the same process that you use for the parts of the computer adaptive tests where you read passages and then answer questions about them. A lot of that process is the same, so I'll bring up that helper document. Okay, so answering questions about a written passage. Read the passage for fun first. So you're going to read all the articles that they give you without taking notes, without highlighting. Just read them and think about what you're reading, wonder about them, picture them in your head. Then you're going to read the questions. But don't try to answer them, just read the questions. Now there's no possible answers on, on these usually. Uh, they want you to, to do things with these questions. But when you read the questions, then you'll know what parts are important to highlight in the passages, in the, in the articles, okay? And so the bottom part of this doesn't really uh, relate to the performance test, but the first three do, okay? So we're gonna read down through these. You will now review several sources. You can review any of the sources as often as you like. Also remember that all the notes that you put on the notepad, this is the exception to the rule when it comes to the notepad. On the computer adaptive tests and other tests, when you make notes in the notepad, they disappear when you come back the next test session or if you pause for over 20 minutes or if you move on from one segment of the test to another. But with the performance task, you're going to be taking notes about the articles and you'll answer the questions about them today, but or the first day that you do the testing, not today, but the first day you do the testing, 
on the performance task, but then the second part is the full write, and you're going to need these notes available to help you do a good job on the writing process. So you're going to read through these, okay? And I'm not going to read through them all right now. I'm just going to um, tell you how to do it. I'm not going to actually do it here. So you're going to read through, okay? And um, over here now, pretend we've, we've read through all the sources. People who own businesses have to consider the well-being of all their guests. And then secondly, being smart and able to handle small objects makes certain animals more appropriate than other animals to assist people who have a disability. So let's look at the first one first. People who own businesses have to consider the well-being of all their guests. Okay, so we're going to scan through the sources and simply look for people owning businesses and thinking about the well-being of all their guests. So I'm just scanning through. Remember, when we scan and we skim, we're just looking really quickly for specific information that's over here. Okay, so I'm not reading carefully now. I'm just looking for those things. Okay, I did not find anything about people owning businesses in the first two articles. But when I got down here to the third one, new service animal rules, now it's talking about uh, animals being in public places. Now only dogs and miniature horses are allowed in public places. The changes were meant to clear up confusion, but uh, here we go. Business owners were unclear about the kind of service animals that were allowed in their businesses. They were also unclear about the amount of responsibility that they had for service animals that were brought into their businesses. So I'm definitely going to highlight that. Remember, you can either click here and highlight, or you can just right click right in the middle and highlight. Okay, so now they're just giving a, uh, an example about a man with a snake. And he comes in. It says people were allowed to choose any kind of animal they wanted. And uh, before the new rule, any type of animal could have been considered a service animal. But now only service animals permitted in public places are dogs and miniature horses. Well, why? That's my first question. Why? Why did they do that? So here it is. What made the changes necessary to protect people from diseases? Different animals carry certain diseases. When animals go into public places, they might pass illnesses to humans. In addition, some animals are not trained to keep an area clean. For example, birds could leave droppings on a store floor. This creates an unhealthy setting for others. That's definitely something to do with the well-being of other guests. So, it says, click on the boxes to match each source with the idea or idea that it supports. Some ideas may have more than one source selected. This one talking about people owning businesses and the well-being of their guests, I could only find anything to do with that in this source, the source number three. Okay, now I'm going to go back. You're going to uh, take away the highlighting from the first one and then move on to the second one. Being smart and able to handle small objects makes certain animals more appropriate than other animals to assist people who have a disability. Okay, so let's see. We're looking for uh, animals that are smart and able to handle small objects. So here we go. Source number one. Oh, and I'm also going to, I forgot to say, over here. Okay, as you uh, do go through and make notes, you're going to make notes about each source. Make sure that you keep track of which source you got which info from. So source, and you can just put, number one. Okay, you don't have to write the word source. Remember, when you take notes, they should be short and quick. So one, put the author's name and the, and the uh, title. So Monkey Helpers by Tamara Orr. Okay, so now we're looking about, we're looking for things about them being small and able to hold things. Okay. Capuchin monkeys are very small. They're very smart, and they can pick up tools and use them to solve problems. Okay, there. It's talking about handling small objects and being smart. So right now, I'm in source one. I might as well go ahead and check this. Okay, but now I want to go down. I don't even have to read the rest. I already know that it's in source one. So let's go down and look for that in source two. 
animals helping people. A monkey who, who helps you drink out of a straw? Hmm, it might be in this source. Let's see. Assistance animals like this capuchin monkey are smart and nimble enough to help in lots of ways. They can turn lights off and on and off and play a CD or get their owners a cool drink. So, again, here's the capuchin monkey. And I find that in source two. Okay, so notice we have two checks here. And the third one, is there anything here about animals that are very smart and hold things? Oh, look at that. Some people use monkeys. These monkeys have similar hand and finger control to humans so they can perform tasks more than other animals. So I think I'm gonna say that they're in all three. This one, being smart and able to handle small objects. Okay, so that's how to do the first part. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get ready here for to take notes in the different sources. It's really important that you can keep track of where you got your notes from. So source two is animals helping people. Notice they don't give the author's name. I wish they did, I think they should, but they didn't. So just put source two when you talk about it. And the third one, new service animal rules by Claire Mishika. Okay, so when I take notes about all of these, I'm gonna put them in the right spot so I can tell which one uh, said it. So I'm going to save and close. Let's go to the next problem, next one. Okay, the sources discuss how service animals help people. Explain what you have learned about service animals, about how service animals help people. Use one detail from source one, one detail from source two to support your explanation. For each detail, include the source title or number. See, that's why I told you to, um, Make sure when you do your notes, remember I can get back to them right here, that you take notes and keep them separated into which part, which source they came from. Because if you just say something and don't tell where you learned it from, that's plagiarism and, uh, and you're not gonna pass this section because they specifically say for each detail, include the source title or number, okay? So I'm gonna go up to the top and I'm gonna start taking notes just about, notice I'm going to take, to reset the highlighting. So all the highlighting from before is gone. And I'm gonna to go to my notes. And what am I gonna talk about? Just explain what you have learned about how service animals help people. And it's only from source one and, and source two. So we don't even have to look at source three for this one. So let's see, monkey helpers. Okay, do, 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 do. This isn't talking about the monkeys yet. Here we go, capuchin monkeys, they're small, blah, blah, blah. Okay, right there, their hands can easily carry small tools. This makes it easier for them to handle modern items like remotes and cell phones. There you go, that's one thing they can do. Uh, let's see, some monkeys, like howler monkeys are too large or strong, uh, and if they're not properly trained, they'll be unreliable. This is not really saying how they help people though. So this is more the, the dangers of some kinds. Uh, here, capuchins are small, easy to train, able to bond and form close, close relationships with humans. Uh, I'm still going down to see what else they can do. They learn how to take a bath, but that doesn't really help the people. Ah, look at that. They learn how to load a DVD, play, DVD into a player and push play, how to open and close microwave doors. So there's another thing that they can do. Now remember, they only needed one detail, so I really have enough right there. So here we go. Here's my, here are my notes. Now I go back to my highlighting and turn it into notes that are even smaller. Um, I'm going to make sure that I put that they're capuchin monkeys because that's their specific kind. Uh, let's see, carry small tools, remotes, cell phones, and then the other notes, load DVD into player and push play, open and close microwave doors. There, those are all my notes for source one. You see how you're taking something huge and just boiling it down into something very small? This is not scary, right? This is just a little bit and that's all you really need to worry about for what you write. Now let's go to 
animals helping people. Let's see. A monkey can help you drink out of a straw. A dog can open up the refrigerator. Seeing eye dogs are, uh, they are to be the eyes of people who cannot see. They guide and protect horseback riding. Makes people feel happy and confident. So horses do that. Hearing dogs help people who are deaf or hard of hearing. They are trained to do what? To let their owners know when the doorbell rings or if the smoke alarm goes off or if the baby wakes up from a nap. That's what the hearing dogs do. And this dog carries this boy's backpack. So look at all these notes we have right here. We have a lot. Okay, so a monkey help people drink with straw. Dog, open, fridge, door. Now, when I type the little report, I'm not going to say fridge. I'm going to say refrigerator, but these are just my notes. So real quick, if I make a mistake spelling, I'm not going to worry about it. Um, seeing eye dogs, guide and protect. Horses make people feel happy. And hearing dogs tell if doorbell rings, smoke alarm, baby wakes, dog carries backpack. Okay, so there you go. All we need is one detail from source one and one detail from source two. But you're not just going to say a capuchin monkey can, can uh, carry tools. You need an introduction. So always start with what you're talking about, okay? What do they want? Explain what you have learned about how service animals help people. Sort of just restate it. Service animals are specially, are specially trained animals that help people who have disabilities or special needs, period. There's my introductory sentence. For example, Capuchin monkeys can carry small tools, remotes, cell phones, or DVDs, according to source one, monkey helpers. Okay, this is really important. You have to say where you found it. Now let's look at source two. We've got our one detail. Let's look at source two. Um, source two explained that some dogs can open refrigerator doors or carry backpacks. Some can tell when there are sounds like smoke alarms. Some can tell where there are sm where there are sounds like smoke alarms, babies crying or the doorbell. Period. This is good for deaf or hearing impaired people. Now you want a conclusion sentence. You just don't want to end right in the middle of talking about this. You want a conclusion. Um, how about these animals must be very smart and also friendly because they are able to be trained and they take good care of their owners. There, there's my conclusion and that will, that will pass this kind of performance task. Uh, some things to remember. You've got to have more than one or two sentences to pass this. To, to get a score that passes, you have to have more than one sentence. Uh, for you younger students, count your periods. The, the whole thing shouldn't be one big sentence with a period on the end. Count your periods. You need to let your people, who, your readers, stop and breathe. So when you're done with the whole thing, read it quietly to yourself. Listen how it sounds to you. And you'll know. If you listen carefully, you'll know where there needs to be a period. Remember that there should be an introduction sentence. There needs to be two details at least. So one from source one and one from source two. You need to tell where they came from. This one came from source one. This stuff comes from source two. And you need to say that. And then make some sort of conclusion sentence. Now I'm going to click next. And there it is. You've reached the end of the segment. Review your answers before continuing the test. 
You will not be able to come back to these questions later. Click on a question number below to review it. I'll just click next. There it is. Okay, it wasn't the end of the test. It was just leaving that segment. You are leaving the current segment. Are you sure you want to do this? Note, you will not be able to change any answers once you leave this segment. Yes, I'm sure. And that is the first part. Now, this is the second day of testing, and you're going to be working on a larger written piece. This is going to be your opinion paper, where you're talking. Still, you're talking about the same stories, the same articles that, that you read, and you're still going to have your notes to look at. See, they're still there. Notice that also you have a dictionary that you can use right there. That will help you. And a thesaurus. A thesaurus, a thesaurus is a wonderful tool. I love thesauruses because you can, you can find really much more interesting words. So like let's, let's say that the monkeys are small. Okay. And then, oh, and I'm going to click thesaurus. And here, see, you can, you can say that they are pint sized or that they are little, that's kind of a boring word, or diminutive. They will, they'll give you a bunch of synonyms that you could use that might be um, more interesting than just using the word small. Okay, so you could say miniature, a miniature monkey, or a teeny monkey. A tiny monkey. They're all words that mean small and they're just more interesting than just the word small. Also, if you see a word in the story and you don't know what it is, you don't know what it means. So let's look down here and see is there a word that you might not know what it is? How about you probably do know? I'm going to remove the highlighting. You probably do know what the word violent is. You probably do. But let's say that you don't. Okay. Let's go to the dictionary and type the word violent, just copy it, violent, and then click dictionary, and then it will tell you what it means, okay? Showing very strong force, using or likely to use harmful force, okay? So it's very strong and forceful. So now we're in the, the full right portion of the performance task. And so everything here on the left-hand side is the same. The task, the articles, everything is exactly the same. On the right-hand side, service animals opinion performance task. So in this case, they want you to write an opinion paper. Uh, in, other, in other performance tasks, you might be asked to write sort of a research report, an explanation or a narrative. Uh, you need to really pay attention to what they're asking you for. In this case, they want an opinion performance task. So, part two, you will now review your notes and sources and plan, draft, revise, and edit your writing. So notice you've got your full writing process there that you should be familiar with. You may use your notes and go back to the sources. Now, read your assignment and the information and how your writing will be scored. Then begin your work. Your assignment. When your class returns from the library, your classmates begin to share what they learned about different types of service animals. They also begin to discuss the new rule that allows only dogs and miniature horses as service animals in public places. Some students agree with the rule and some students disagree with the rule. Your teacher asks you to write a paper explaining your opinion about the new rule. In your paper, you will take a side as to whether you agree with the rule allowing only service dogs and miniature horses in public places or whether you disagree with the rule. Your paper will be read by your teacher and your classmates. Make sure you clearly state your opinion. So you need to tell exactly what you think about the rule, what you think the rule should be. Write several paragraphs supporting your opinion with reasons and details from the sources. So notice it says write several paragraphs. A paragraph, a paragraph should be four or five sentences, and they want you to write a couple, so or several. So make sure you write more than one paragraph. Clearly use your own words except when quoting directly from the sources. Be sure to give the source title or remember for the details or facts you use. 
or number for the details or facts you use. Remember, a well-written paper, a well-written opinion paper, has a clear opinion, is well-organized and stays on the topic, has an introduction and a conclusion, uses transitions, uses details or facts from the sources to support your opinion, puts the information from sources in your own words, except when using direct quotations from the sources. And remember, if you use direct quotations, you need to have quotation marks around it, and you still have to tell which source you got it from. Um, otherwise, it needs to be in your own words, and still you need to tell where you learned it from. Otherwise, it's plagiarism. You need to give the title or number of the source for the details or facts you included, develop ideas clearly, use clear language, and follow the rules of writing, spelling, punctuation, or, and grammar usage. Now begin working on your opinion paper. Manage your time carefully so that you can 1. Plan your opinion paper, 2. Write your opinion paper, and 3. Revise and edit the final draft of your opinion paper. You are not expected and we don't want you to try to finish this all in one test session. If you try to do that, it's going to be careless, rushed work. So I would say that the first session should be spent, the first session on the full write should be spent on planning out your paper. For part two, you're being asked to write an opinion paper that is several paragraphs long. Several means like three or four. Type your response in the box below. The box will get bigger as you type. Remember to check your notes and your pre-writing and planning as you write and then revise and edit your opinion paper. You really should grab a piece of scratch paper. And remember, you have to tell yourself to do that. Your teacher cannot remind you to get scratch paper or get a pencil. Okay, so first take a look at your notes. Okay, remember your notes will be saved from one session to the next. But let's, let's pretend that for this paper you decide that you want to take the position that you think that capuchin monkeys should all be, also be allowed as service animals. It says uh, the new rule allows only dogs and miniature horses as service animals in public places. Some students agree with the rule and some students disagree with the rule. So you don't think that all sorts of animals should be allowed as service animals in public places like tarantulas and snakes and things like that or ducks which by the way ducks are very nice but they cannot control uh, themselves they cannot be potty trained and they will just go all over the place so they would not be good service animals and there's just a handy tip in the middle of this for you uh, but you take the position that you think that's fine, dogs and miniature horses, but you also think the capuchin monkey should be allowed as service animals. So when you look at your notes, the first part, source number one, capuchin monkeys, they can hold remotes and cell phones and load DVD players, push play, open and close microwaves. That has to do with what you're talking about with your persuasive piece. But number two, your, your notes here, um, only the monkey helping people drink with a straw has to do with supporting uh, your ideas as to why the monkey should be allowed as a service animal. So really you can just get rid of all this other stuff with the dog and the horse and, and, and all that. Get rid of that. We want to stick to just notes on capuchin monkeys. So let's go through, let's, let's look at capuchin monkeys. We're thinking we want them to be allowed as service animals. Well, why? Uh, how are we going to convince people that they should be allowed? So adding to the, the notes in number one, notice that people have been using them. More than 160 people have been using them for over 35 years. People who have spinal cord injuries, so they can't move and the, the monkeys help them. So that's important. More than 35 years, that's a long time. 35 plus years, more than 160 people, okay? And uh, they're small, so it's not like bringing a gorilla into a restaurant. They're small, and uh, they're very smart, and we could be highlighting these things. Highlight, 
uh, they have the ability to pick up tools and use them to solve problems. Their hands easily carry small tools. These are all, oops, look what I did. I reset the highlighting. It's very easy to do. Be careful with that uh, to not get rid of all your highlighting when you don't mean to. Some monkeys are too big and strong like howler monkeys, but capuchins are small. Okay, so that makes them a good type of monkey. And let's see, going down here, there was some negative information. We don't want to include that because we want just things that, gonna, that are going to support our opinion that capuchin monkeys should be allowed. Uh, they live with foster families for as long as 12 years before they're given to people to help them. So they're really well trained. They get used to being around other pets. They can take baths, so they're nice and clean. Okay, there's a monkey college, and they get trained there for a long time. Okay, so I'm just skimming through, finding things that will support this idea that they should be allowed to be service animals. Okay, so let's scroll down to source two. Remember, the only thing we care about here is about the monkeys. So they help people drink from a straw. These are other animals. Caption monkeys smart. Turn on the lights off and on. Play a CD. Get their owners a drink. Uh, they're talking about the reason why they made this law is to protect people from diseases and that different animals carry certain diseases. They might pass them to humans. And also some animals are not trained to keep an area clean, like birds leave droppings on the floor, and that creates an unhealthy setting, especially like if you're in a restaurant, right? But monkeys, well, first of all, they can get rabies shots just like dogs. Why would a monkey be any more uh, dirty or, or have more diseases than a dog? Uh, they can get their shots too, and they also can be potty trained. So this is another reason why maybe they would be good animals to be able to have in public. Three, which is uh, Mishika, is the author. Okay, let's mention that the reason for the rule is to protect from diseases and um, birds can't be potty trained. But, but, you know, monkeys are smart and they can be trained to be potty trained and take baths and everything. So they're not going to have the diseases. Okay, so save and close. Now, you're going to start planning, planning your, your opinion paper. So you might want to use uh, a wonderful graphic organizer to organize your thinking and start planning for your paper. The... Uh, boxes and bullets, the visual tools, and so we're going to give a demonstration of that with notes from this, from this performance task. So using the visual tools, first you're going to put your position statement or your point of view at the top. What is it that you want to convince people of or persuade them to do or think? You're going to lay out your three reasons. This is just an organization here first. Three reasons, and each one of them will have facts, examples, and support that you'll find in the sources. Remember, keep track of which sources you get which information from. And at the end, you're going to restate your position statement or your point of view, but in a little different way, you know, so it's interesting. So we're going to say, lawmakers should allow capuchin monkeys to be service animals in addition to dogs and horses. Why? First of all, monkeys can do things that dogs and horses can't do. They can carry remotes from source one, cell phones, DVDs, open and closed microwaves, blah, blah, blah. Number two, capuchin monkeys are not dangerous. They're small. They're not big and strong like howler monkeys. They can, they're easy to train. They can take baths. They know how to take baths. They don't have diseases. They're not like bird droppings. They can control themselves. And three, people have used them for many years. In source one, it says for over 35 years, more than 160 people have been helped by capuchin monkeys. So those are just your notes in an organized way. And 
Again, your statement, Capuchin monkeys have been shown for many years to be smart, safe, and able to do many things for disabled people, so they should be allowed to be in public, just like dogs and miniature horses. So now that you've organized your, your plan with your, with your visual tools, then you're going to take the notes that you, that you wrote and write your opinion paper. So you're going to work on your rough draft and it will be saved. So remember, you don't have to get everything done in one day. So you'll be writing in here. Remember, if it says several paragraphs, you need to give them several paragraphs and refer back to the notes that you took. Your notes here in the global notes will help you and also your, your visual tools. So remember to use the scratch paper and do your, do your planning, your graphic organizer, your, your boxes and bullets and write your opinion paper. And then remember that you have word processing tools here. They actually do have a spell check tool here. So if you spell something wrong, monkeys should be allowed to be service animals, just like dogs and horses, period. So if I do the spell check, I did a mistake on purpose. See? Capuchin is actually spelled correctly, and it just doesn't know the word capuchin because it's not that common. But animals, you see, I spelled it wrong. There it is, animals. So click it, and it will fix it for you. Okay? So there's the, that's very nice to have, the spell checker. You need to remember to put your periods have more than one sentence in a paragraph. A paragraph should be four or five sentences. That means each one starting with a capital, ending with a period. And so you're going to write your, your paper here and then go through and definitely read it to yourself. Read it out, read it softly out loud to yourself and listen for anything that sounds strange. Listen for where you should put periods. Uh, check back with your notes, make sure that you said everything that was important, and remember, always tell where you got your information from. Always cite your sources. So once you finish with your, with your paper here, you'll click Next, and that's it. Select the End Test button to review your answers. Okay, and then you see the red End Test button. You'll click that. You have reached the end of the test. Click yes to end your test. Yes. And there you go. You've reached the end of the test. Submit test. Are you sure you want to submit the test? Click yes. And then log out.